Hello, hello, hello. How's everybody doing out there? Hopefully this doesn't start out all choppy and crazy like the last one did, but uh, yeah, didn't know uh, what everybody was doing. Didn't see anybody going live. I've been thinking about going live. I thought about going Friday and then Saturday, and of course it just never happened because always something else pops up and didn't do it, so nobody else is going live. I'm going Friday and then Saturday, uh -oh. and of course it just never Every time it would not be a one one stream if I did not have that come on and kick. <laughs> oh, how's everybody doing out there? Like I said, don't know how many people are going to be showing up today. So, whoever's watching this later or pops in, what's up? How you doing? Hope you had an absolutely fantastic weekend. Oh, I don't think I'm going to be breaking in. I have uh, all these samples here that just keep sitting on my shelves. So, I think this is a great way to make myself actually bust in and start tasting them. <laughs> what's up, Jake Cruz? I see you out there. Uh, any new coffees out there? Are you still sipping on the Dead Man's, what is it, the Double Dead or something? Or is that the one I, that must be the Raven's Brew one. But yeah, that one you were talking about sounds insane. What's well, good? I see you out there, Christian Olds. Good to see you. Good to see you. You sipping on anything tonight? Uh, it's supposed to be a sipping on samples. And of course, I'm starting out with a yellow spot, <laughs> which is not a sample. It's my bottle right over there. But you got to warm the palate up with something. So it's all good. T volume, what's good? I see you out there. What's up? What's up? Let me know if anybody's out there sipping or just hanging out, what everybody's doing on a nice sunny Sunday afternoon. Man, this yellow spot's actually smelling pretty good. I gotta say, I was not the big, I'm not the big, I was not. I am not the biggest fan of yellow spot. It's just it's expensive and just boring for what it is. I know it's a lot of people's favorite Irish. It's just not mine. I really want to try those green spots, the uh, wine finished one, the uh, Louis Vuitton and that Bardone or whatever, the Bartone, I think. But yeah, there's two uh, green spot finished ones that I want, definitely want to try here. Those are delicious. But the regular green spots, just water. <laughs> it is just water. If you know somebody that just wants to step a, toe, step a toe into whiskey or dip a toe into whiskey, that is a good one to start with. Oh, man. What's up, 26 name day? Happy birthday, T Volume. Happy birthday. Shit, man. I hope you're out there partying and doing the do. Hope you have a drink in your hand or at least doing whatever it is you want to be doing on your name day. Happy birthday. That's awesome. Sipping the night's watch by Oban. Hey, nothing wrong with that. That was my uh that was my favorite one until the uh Mortlock came out. And then that's not even really a fair comparison because the Mortlock 15 is a 15 year old and it's like, it's a real whiskey. It's well done. It's all the right things. Whereas all the other ones I feel are, are like starter whiskeys, but the Oban out of all of them is always my favorite. I like the Stark and even the Lannister grew on me, which is a peated whiskey. And I am not a fan of peat, but the Lannister nine is like a sweet peat. So I don't know after a while, like it just threw me at first, but it grew on me after a while. You're sipping. The Lord Grimm told me to indulge. <laughs> oh, what did Grimm tell you to indulge in? Actually, that's going to be one of my uh, next reviews coming up. I still have that uh, that last GOT. I didn't even realize they were putting one out, but they put out one final GOT beer, and I got that sitting. God, it's been sitting in the fridge for a freaking month. I've got to hurry up and get that before it goes bad. But, yeah, I got that last GOT beer. I'm going to be doing a review on that one pretty soon. I pretty much got all the GOT beers except for Bend the Knee. And there, I guess there was like three different bottles of that. Uh, I got one where there was three bottles of the Dragon one. I can't even remember which one that was, but I got one of the bottles. I had three bottles. I didn't even like the beer, so I wasn't about to buy two more bottles of it. And uh, one of the first ones, uh, I think it's Raven's Brew or Three-Eyed Raven. I think the Three-Eyed Raven, something like that. But one of the first ones. But I got all the other ones. There were... For the most part, pretty good. That uh, that royal edition that they came out with, those were garbage. Those were awful. Uh, I like the uh, Hand of the Queen, the Tyrion one. That was a barley wine, but the other three were just garbage. I did not like those at all. Oh, man, Jake Cruz out there drinking coffee. Death Wish, that's what it was called, yeah. Mis mixed with some black silk. There you go. Yeah, I got to look for that death wish. It looks like some good wake-up juice. Wake you up in the morning. I mean, this one's opened up. It's, I think once the air has been on it, it's opened up nice, but just not. I mean, I love Irish whiskey. I mean, it's good. It's not bad. I'm never going to turn down a pour, but 
just not my favorite. But it's not horrible, not bad, nothing wrong with it. It's just, I think I overhyped it in my mind. So many people were talking such great things about it, how it's like so many people's favorite Irish whiskey. So I think I just had illusions of grandeur. And by the time I tasted it, I was like, eh, that's nice. But, and it is, it's nice. Oh, anybody do anything exciting out there this weekend? Anything crazy? Any cool plans that went on? Or everybody just still down in lockdown mode? It's hard. You just you think about stuff. You're like, oh, man, you know, got a day off or whatever. We're going to be kicking it. What should we do? And there is nothing to do. And some of the things that you can do, you really don't want to do. You're like, I don't think that's safe. i tell you one of the craziest things I did lately was drop 150 freaking dollars on a bottle of rum. That was a first, but it's like, it was one of those things where I went into the liquor store and saw it and I was like, oh my God, but I've paid more than that for whiskey. So I was like, and I like rum more than whiskey. So, I mean, doesn't two and two equal four, shouldn't it just make sense? But still you get to this, you know, you get to this associated price point with rum and they start out. I mean, it was hard enough to spring for the $114 for the El Dorado 21 and the, uh, Ronza Kappa XO, and now they got me all the way up to like 149. I was like, good lord. But yeah, we look, uh, keep an eye out for that review coming out. It's the uh, woo -woo. little sneak peek, the Nobiliari. It's a four square rum, 150 freaking dollars for this. And that's before tax. So you already know it was like 180 something out the door for rum. It's like, get the hell out of here. Or maybe 170, but whatever. It's still way more than I've ever paid for a bottle of rum. So yeah, I'm. I don't even know if this if this thing can ex, uh, live up to expectations, but I will have to say that it's a hundred and twenty-four proof. So it's cast strength. It's definitely. I mean, outside of like the 151s, the Lemon Heart and the uh, Bacardi 151, it's the highest proof I've ever seen outside of those. So. Cast strength, 124 proof. It's going to bring the thunder. It's 14 years old, so just like a whiskey, it's been aged in oak barrels for uh, 14 years. So ex-bourbon barrels. So this one was aged in an ex-bourbon barrel for 14 years. So yeah, that's going to, I don't know. I just don't know if I can even grade it fairly after paying $150. I'm like, are you kidding me? <laughs> Oh man, Lord Grim got a. It's hot here. Been trying to sit around. Oh man, you're down there in Vegas. I know it's like a. I think it's going to be like 106 down there tomorrow. So man, yeah, stay cool, stay inside, and in those ACs. I know it's freaking hot down there. But yeah, these four squares, man. I've been getting these. Obviously, I got this. Uh, I've already done these reviews. The Sagacity, the 2007, and the 2008. They are delicious. No additives, no sugar added, no flavor, no coloring added, just pure straight out of the barrel, the way rum should be, and so, so good. But still, 150 for this one, you better be something special. Oh. Yeah, I'm definitely gonna have to do a run up now too, grab the uh, best four square. Actually, I don't know if I'll put, I'll do a run up with all the cask strength ones. I'll do like a rum rumble with those. And then I'll grab the Sagacity, which is still 96, which is way more than most rums. And I'll put that up against the El Dorado 21, which is one of the best rums on the planet, and the Ronza Cafe XO. So that'll be a cool one. Keep an eye out for those. So definitely got some rum rumbles in the uh, near future coming up. I'm going to plug this in. Hopefully nobody's out there in headphones and it doesn't snap all out. Don't want that dying. Quiet, but I know the microphone can pick it up. I mean, you're crazy. You need to watch uh, Snowpiercer so we can theorize. Yeah, I was actually my girls looking for a new, uh, looking for a new series to watch. We literally just talked about that right before she went to bed. So I think uh, that is going to be what we're going to watch and check out. I absolutely be looking and looking for that. Snowpiercer. Has anybody else out there seen that one? Anybody seen Snowpiercer? Is that the worthy one? J. Cruz saying he can theory about, theorize about it. Sounds like a fun one and right up my alley, that's for sure. Oh, man, I just, so crazy. These beautiful, sunny Sunday afternoon, and I'm like, nope, I'll go ahead and just sit right here on my ass inside. 
<laughs> that's crazy. But at least we got some sweet spirits to sip on and some cool people to hang out with. So really, what more can you ask for? Any good movies anybody waiting to come out for? Any good movies are going to going to be streaming that uh, we can watch. I know The Boys is coming out. We talked about that last time. That's coming out in September. That's probably the biggest thing I'm looking forward to. But they're supposed to get some new ones coming out. That uh, You think that uh, New Mutants is ever going to come out? That thing's supposedly been coming out for two and a half years. They're like, is that, Are they ever going to get that out? I think they have a July 14th date. I'm like, no way. I don't think there's <laughs> any way in a million years they make that date. For some reason, that's just... It's like a what is it, a Marvel horror flick, basically, and I don't know, I think that just jinxed it. It's like, we're comics, not horror genre. But yeah, it does look cool. It's got our girl Macy in it, so you know we are all going to go watch it. <laughs> all the Game of Thrones fans. I'm almost ready. I was actually just thinking the other day, it's like, should I restart Game of Thrones and like start from season one, or should I actually do a second viewing of season eight? <laughs> that is a tough call. Because I think if I started season one, I might not, I may just cut out season eight and not even watch it. I don't know. <laughs> what do you guys think about that? We well, yeah, haven't done that. Uh, it's actually been a while. So I'm thinking about going back through and uh, doing another watch of the old GOT. It's been a while. Probably forgot a few things, even though I've seen every episode probably 15 freaking times. Oh, man. What's up, GOT fans? How many times have you seen series one through five? Average, how many times have you seen every episode? One through five. I know uh, six, seven, and eight, eh, but one through five, how many times have you seen every? I mean, back when it was just the sickest show ever created. Still kind of is, just didn't stick the landing. Not everybody can do that. What are you going to do? Yeah, the yellow spot is uh, the yellow spot is just all kinds of okay. Kristen, you've seen it all at least ten times. There you go. About five, yep. Yeah. Like I said, I've seen everyone at least fifteen. Hey, I see spots. I see out there. What's good, buddy? How many times have you seen every episode of Game of Thrones, season one through five? Average. Ooh, I don't know. A little water. All right, this is one, actually both of these are, I've been wanting to try for a long time, but this is the John, the Powers, John's Lane, 46% Irish whiskey. Got a sample sent to me. I was gonna buy a bottle, but now I get to try before I buy. Let's put a little in there, see what's up, see if we wanna do a review. Ooh, this is sticky. Why is it so sticky? Oh man, how you been, Spox? You've been you've seen each one about three times? Now, have you seen season eight three times? I've seen season eight once, kinda twice, because I always watch it once for fun and then I watch it a second time to do uh, write my recap on it. But that was like back to back, so it's kinda once. But yeah, I still have yet to go back to do a rewatch of season eight, which is kinda wild to me. Kinda wild. Oh wow. I just the sweet buttered biscuits, cookies, honey, a little bit of lemon zest. This smells amazing. Oh, nothing wrong with that. Man, I've been dying. I've been wanting to crack this one open for a long time. I've heard such great things. They say this is one of the better ones. Powers John Lane. And at 46%, I love it. Nothing wrong with the 92 proof. So anybody have any like big plans for the summer that you had to cancel because everything that's going on or is it just kind of life as usual? Everybody just kind of just making their way through it. I hate when I hear, you know, somebody's like, oh, I was going to Madrid and had to cancel or had these big major plans and we had to cancel. I'm like, oh, that just sucks. That's no good. That's no fun at all. Not cool for anybody. Oh, me, oh, my, oh, me. Yeah, that smells delicious. There's nothing wrong with that. I can't wait to taste that. I don't know how long I'm going to be able to let it just air out. We're going to have to taste it. All right, give me two seconds. So one. Oh, 
He's gone. He cut out. Where'd he go? He's absolutely left the building. Oh, man. When you are drinking, no matter what, make sure you drink plenty of water. It will help you out tremendously. No doubt about it. Are you a hockey fan? If so, do you like the Kraken logo? I'll be 100% honest with you. I mean, other than like just seeing flashes of it on the TV and whatever, when people are talking about it, I haven't even seen the Kraken logo. <laughs> no, I am not a hockey fan. It's just the hockey and tennis are just the two sports I just never really got into. Um, yeah, I don't know really anything about it or <laughs> haven't looked into it. And when I was a little kid and uh, when I was down in Oklahoma City, what was it like the Oklahoma City? I can't even remember what the name was. But uh, my grandpa took me to a game, and I remember I caught a puck. So I got a puck out of that. That was pretty cool. I guess that was kind of a big deal for hockey. But, yeah, I mean, it was cool. Like, it was weird being, you know, watching guys fight on the ice and not get stopped. I always thought that was kind of a trip. But, yeah, I, I, I couldn't even tell you the rules of hockey. <laughs> oh, Jake Cruz, you big Golden Knights fan? You been to uh, any of the games down there? I mean, that'd be kind of cool, especially in Vegas, just to go into an ice arena, just to cool off. That'd be kind of great. But, man, that's got to be a bummer if you're a football fan, the Raiders, uh, everybody that was looking forward to seeing the Raiders down in Vegas. That's just gone to shit. Not happening. That's a bummer. Never watched any hockey until you got the Knights. Now you love it. That's awesome. That's awesome. A little surprise. Bring your team to your city and then you never know. That's why I don't watch basketball anymore. Absolutely love the Seattle Super Sox. And, oh, wow, is my thing glitching? I just see it on there. It looks like it's glitching out. That's crazy. Has this thing been glitching the whole time? That's kind of lame. Probably Sunday, probably a whole bunch of people streaming at the same time. But, yeah, once they uh, kind of stole the Seattle Super Sonics in the dead of night like that and sent them away, I just I quit watching basketball right then and there. Went from being a diehard Sonics fan to just not watching another game since. And I still haven't watched a game. Literally just quit watching basketball 100%. Couldn't tell you who's on what team, who's doing what, who's won what championships. Nothing. Crazy. So yeah, now it's just basically baseball. I mean baseball. I'm wearing a baseball shirt. Saw that. Um, now it's basically football. I used to work for the Mariners, and that was about as much into baseball as I got. But, yeah, basically I'm just I like football and football. <laughs> football is exciting. I always put on a put on my own fantasy football league, and then I'm in like one or two others, and that's about it for me. Your cousin has season tickets. Nice. Yeah, I'd bet they'd be pretty pricey down in Vegas, just because the arena can only be so big, and there's really no other sports. So it's like diehard fans and gamblers and betters. They're all gonna want to go see like the one major sports franchise you have. So. I can imagine those tickets would be pretty pricey down there. That'd be kind of harsh. But that's cool. Your uh, cousin's got season tickets. Oh, just got the Raiders. Yeah, the stadium's looking crazy. It looks cool. It looks like a freaking Darth Vader's helmet. <laughs> you guys seen that stadium? It looks nuts. It looks like a total Darth Vader's helmet. But, yeah, that'd be kind of sweet. And if it could be enclosed and turn on the uh, AC, that's a necessity for Vegas. That'd be awesome. Climate control. Everybody want to come play in Vegas because they know no matter win or lose, the after party is gonna be lit. Oh, it's gonna be sweet. Oh, speaking of sweet, this thing smells amazing. It's time to taste it. Sponge by everyone. It's nice. <laughs> it's uh, zesty for 46. It's kind of perfect right there at the 92. Not too much burn. Just a nice little warm. A little zip over the tongue. A little lemon zest. Um, all that sweetness you smell. There's not a whole lot of sweetness on the taste. But uh, to be honest, it tastes a whole lot <laughs> like the yellow spot, which is probably pretty good for that because I think, uh, I mean, I, I haven't really looked into it, but I think if I saw it the last time that John Powers is a lot cheaper. That yellow spot's ridiculous. We got that one for 109. 
Um, I've, I've seen it up to 114 now. Some places it's like 124. It's like, man, that's just getting ridiculous. It's just, it's not that. I mean, that's a great $80, $85 whiskey, and that's about it. Paying much more than that is crazy. But then I'm sure I'll pop 130 for the red spot, no problem. Probably be even more than that by the time I see it. Things so rare and hard to find. It's like I've been looking for one of those forever, forever, ever, forever, ever. Oh, man. Yeah, man. I am bummed that I did not get to make our Vegas trip, and the Giant Tamer is even more bummed. It's like, I mean, we're, we're used to going to Vegas twice a year, and I don't think we're going to be able to go at all this year. It's terrible. <laughs> it's such a bad feeling not being able to play cards, and oh, man, it's just a bummer. This is going to be my year. 20 is my favorite number. What happened? 2020 must be the opposite of that. My God. Unbelievable. This is supposed to be the year I went down and won the main event. How are you going to win it if they don't even have it? <laughs> oh, so miserable. At J. Cruz, just saw today the new stadium has a nightclub in it. <laughs> that does not surprise me at all. They're like, hey, you know what? After the game, you don't have to go anywhere. Just come on up to the club, have a few drinks, and kick it. I mean, you already have a captive audience of, what, 25, 30,000? It's a great way to pack a club. Quick and easy. They don't have to drive anywhere. They're already there. That's actually pretty sweet. There is, I mean, there's a sweetness. It's not tart. There's a little bit of a tang, but it's just a good, solid Irish whiskey. I mean, nothing crazy fantastical about it, but yeah, the John Powers, it's good. And for 46, oh my God, this goes down like butter. I think that's the biggest part about it. This thing is so smooth. It goes down so smooth and easy. Yep, spots. I play Texas Hold'em. Um, and like the home game that we play around here, uh, it's usually more like, uh, I mean, we play a bunch of stupid games because it's just a bunch of us goofing off. But mainly it's uh, Omaha. But yeah, when I go down to Vegas, it's all pretty much 100% Hold'em. Do tournaments. I don't really play live at all either. I just 100% tournaments when I go down there. And man, every year just kept getting better and better. And I just thought this was going to be the year. And lo and behold, they're like, this year is canceled. Come again. I was like, what? What can you do? Just keep it moving and uh, make it through the best way you can. Oh, man, I was uh, getting low on some of my bottles that I can only get down in Vegas, like the El Dorado 21, and they have this other uh, Ron Zacapa down there that I wanted to get. And I was looking forward to coming down and grabbing those bottles, and nay, we'll not be coming down there to grab any bottles. We'll not be coming down there at all. We kind of thought about taking a trip to uh, Cali just to go down there just because uh, the bottles are so much cheaper, but... Jen Chambers is just like, I mean, she's just even nervous staying in hotels. Like, even to the higher end ones, it's like, you never know. You just never know who's there, who has what. If they're asymptomatic, just freak out, freak out, freak out. So, oh, sometimes you just got to stay at home and write it out. And it's not like staying at home is the biggest bummer in the world. <laughs> oh, plenty to do and drink here. That is for damn sure. Man, this is another one I've been wanting to try out. This is the... Abelur Abunda. This is batch 62, and this bad boy is ringing in at 59.9%. So, I mean, we're up over 119 proof. Just get it. 119.8, just under 120 proof. That is going to be a bad boy, that's for sure. Started to open up and then closed up again. Uh, the casinos are open again. Yeah, I've been uh, keeping. I've actually been keeping pretty close tabs on that with uh, some of the vloggers down there and uh, the news stations and what's going on in Vegas. Because, like I said, I mean, it's almost our home away from home. We go there two or three times every every single year, so it's really been a bummer. So yeah, we've been. Uh, I've been watching a lot of that and seeing what's up and. Uh, yeah, I guess you guys just had a major spike. You went from having like one or two deaths a day to having 39 in one day. So, yeah, they're kind of freaking out about that. And uh, they're ready to shut that bad boy back down. 
But if you saw it, I mean, there's a lot going on down there. There's a lot of people kicking it on that strip. They're, they're not social distancing. They're not wearing masks. So it's kind of like, what do you expect? I hate to say that, but yeah. It's like nobody was doing anything. People in the casinos, like they're kind of like, if you were at the table, they were making you act a certain way. But just walking through the casino, I mean, what are they going to do? Body slam you and be like, no, it's Vegas. They want you to have a good time and do what you want to do. It's just... Doing that does not seem to be the right answer right now, unfortunately. What is the right answer is this almost 120 proof freaking Abalure that I've been very excited to try. So let's get this bad boy. Is that a stopper? Is that got a dropper on it? Ah, oh, there we go. It's kind of cool. So it doesn't have the uh, paper in it, so it doesn't spoil the juice. I like that. Patrick, thank you. You're awesome. Oh, this bad boy is going to pack a punch. I was already planning on uh, buying a full bottle of this, but hey, now I get to try another one. I get to try before I buy. I got to tell you that power is it's good, but I'm sure I'll end up with one. But now that I've tasted it, this is the best part about samples, because now that I've tasted that, probably going to be quite a few bottles that I pick up before I even get around to getting that bottle. I mean, I'll have it eventually, but now that I've tasted it, and I mean, there's a lot of other Irish whiskeys out there I want to try. I think my next Irish whiskey is going to be the Tea Lean Malt. I really want to try that Tea Lean Malt. I heard that's a good one, and uh, I think that needs to be on the shelf. Freaking got a couple compass boxes up there on my uh, Irish shelf because my Irish is a little low right now, so got to fill that bad boy back up. You can see it. Let's see. Probably kick it over just a little. My Irish. See the yellow spot sitting there. Then I got the uh, Writer's Tears, a couple of Jamesons, but then I got two compass boxes because I had the room for it there. Woo! Sherry, hello. Hello, Sherry. <laughs> Don't want to get a copyright strike with that beautiful golden pipes of mine. <laughs> yeah, a singer, I am not. My uncle just took a case to the Supreme Court about opening up the churches, but he lost. Oh, wow. Yeah, man, there are a lot of hot topics out there on this. You know, what are, what are your civil rights and what's what? Man, it is. Sticky subjects everywhere you look and turn. I mean, yeah. What's the right thing to do? Nobody knows. It's unprecedented territory. It's like our first time through, and nobody really has any real answers yet. So, yeah, it's kind of a slow go for everything. Oh, man, oh, man, oh, man. What are we going to do tonight? Dude, we just watched a movie called, I think it was called The Good Boys. And right when I saw, like, you know, you read the little synopsis of it at first. And right when I read that, I was like, I don't want this is gonna be so dumb and that movie was everything i thought it would be oh it was horrible <laughs> it was horrible i was like all i kept saying to myself is who is this movie written for i mean it's three kids basically going through you know their little turmoil but it's all a, like adult subject matter so i mean did they think they were getting the best of both worlds like parents could take their kid i would never take my kid to see that and it was just I don't know. I was just kept tripping out about that. Like, who is this movie written for? But yeah, it was awful. <laughs> oh, if you haven't seen it, save yourself some time. If you have seen it, let me know what you think about it in the comments down below. Yeah, I don't know about that one. But yeah, my girl likes to watch all the um, Grammys and Emmy Award, you know, nominated movies and then go watch them all. And that is one you can skip. But one that we did see on there that was on there that pretty much got snubbed that we just watched that was awesome was Dodomite. Uh, what was it, The Adventures of Dodomite or whatever, the Eddie Murphy one. That thing, that was awesome. That was, I mean, I love Eddie Murphy anyway. I can't believe I hadn't seen it yet. But that one was amazing. That was a really good show. He did a great job. You knocked that one out of the park. That's sweet. You just watched K Pax again. Good movie. That's the one with uh, Kevin Spacey, right? When, uh, he th when he says he's an alien and nobody believes him? Is that what that one is? Oh, man. That's yeah, so weird. Like, oh, yeah, I got to go see a movie. No, nope, not going to go see a movie. And they have some big ones coming out. 
Like, would they just say uh, Spider Man 2 just took the spot of Avatar 2 and they're pushing Avatar 2 back or something like that? Yeah, that was a yeah, that was a pretty that was a good movie. That Kevin Spacey K Pax one. Yeah, <laughs> he made it believable all the way around. Had me believing. That was nuts. Yeah, that was that was a pretty good one. Yeah, that's kind of the thing to do now. Like we were saying last time, just go back and rewatch all those classics. I was rewatching Rocky today. Like, oh my god, check this out. And another great one, like that was totally underrated that I just saw that I didn't realize was a DC uh, part of the DC universe was a uh, red that one with like bruce willis and uh uh morgan freeman and uh john uh oh, what's the name john malkovich but yeah that one that was a great show dude. that is so entertaining from start to finish it's amazing but yeah this is uh the era of going back and checking out some old classics Eddie Murphy didn't get near enough credit for Dolomite. I'm telling you, dude, he crushed that one. He absolutely slayed that part. I was, I mean, I knew I'd like I said, I knew I'd like it anyway just because I'm a huge Eddie Murphy fan, but he knocked that role out of the park. He killed it. Like, I imagine that's exactly what it was like working on them sets and dealing with that. It was sweet. Oh, sick, great movie. The sequel was good, too. That's awesome. Way down in the jungle deep. <laughs> I remember Robin Harris used to talk about that in the stand-up. It was awesome. Oh, R.I.P., the great ones. Bernie Mac, Robin Harris. These guys are so freaking funny. I love those guys. What do you think about Eddie Murphy coming back and uh, trying to do another stand-up? They're always talking about it, but I guess there's a lot of hype going into that right now. It's like, is there any way... I mean, it could be better, but it's like you're going you're gonna to put it up against Delirious and Raw, two of basically the greatest stand-ups of all time. It's like, can he live up to what the hype is going to be if he goes on tour and does another stand-up? Does he even have to? I mean, that's just, that's insane. That is just crazy. But, I mean, it would make money because everybody would go see it. I mean... I don't, I mean, even if it got panned by critics, I still think everybody would want to go see it for themselves just because so many huge Eddie Murphy fans out there that loved Raw and Delirious. I think Delirious was the number one stand up of all time. What do you guys think? Who's your favorite comedian out there? Who's your favorite stand up comedian? But yeah, I think Eddie Murphy, probably Delirious, was my number one. There's a bunch of good ones. George Carlin, amazing. Freaking Jim Jeffries, amazing. Richard Pryor's had some great ones. But I think Delirious was my all-time favorite. Oh, man, speaking of all-time favorites, this is smelling delicious. It doesn't, like, for uh, for being a supposed sherry bomb, the Abelor, it doesn't have that big sulfur punch in the face that a lot of sherrys have. This is nice. I like this. This is, it's, <laughs> it smells, dare I say, smooth. Oh, Bill Burr. Yeah, Bill Burr's kind of blowing up everything. Um, he's in everything. He's in all the uh, magazines and on all the shows and even did a Joe Rogan. And, like, yeah, like, he's hot right now. Bill Burr is kind of like the uh, thing of the moment right now. But, yeah, Bill Burr does have some great ones. He's funny. Some of the stuff's like, woo, but, yeah, he is pretty funny for the most part. I love Jim Jeffries. I've seen him live. I watch all his stand-ups. I watch his, um, I just think Jim Jeffries is freaking hilarious. Oh, there's so much you can't say now. Comedy has been hurt bad. Yeah, the PC police are out there. Believe that. <laughs> Believe that. That's why David Chappelle is so great, because he don't give a fuck. He just goes on and just says some shit that will blow your mind. Like, what? He's like, hey. This is the last place that you can say and get away with that shit. It's like he goes into the comment, he goes into the comedy club and lays it down and says, Hey, pull your head out of your ass. This is a comedy club. This is where it's supposed to be. So yeah, he's amazing for that. All those that you named would be would add Cat Williams and Chappelle. Yeah. Ha, I beat you to Chappelle, I think. <laughs> I think I got that out before it typed in there. Absolutely. I don't have a cocaine problem, just like the way it smells. <laughs> Absolutely old school. 
Oh, Richard Pryor, rest in peace, my man. That's so sick. So sick. Oh, that's crazy. Yeah, that's he's a great one. Yeah, it is tough. You go these days and somebody's going to, I mean, it's impossible to go almost anywhere these days and not have somebody get offended by something. It's like, come on. That's another reason why Jim Jeffries is so funny because he pokes in and on that all around. It's pretty great. Uh, absolutely. I mean, dude, if you know you're going to a comedy club, they're going to fuck with you. That's what comedy is. They make fun of stuff. It's going to, like, offend some people. That's kind of what it is. It's comedy. But it's jokes. It's not, like, meant to be harmful or hateful. And if it is that way, then it's not comedy and it's not funny. So, yeah, I mean, that's what makes comics so great, dude. They're masters at their art form. They're absolutely amazing at it. That's why there's not that many great ones and a whole bunch of shitty ones that try, but epic fail. Like, yo, man, you ain't funny. Oh, man. I, all right. I'll let this open up a bit. I'm <laughs> pushing it off a little bit. This is going to be a punch in the face. 120 proof. Yup. But it smells hella smooth. I'm not supposed to say smooth. I don't care. This smells hella smooth. Like just light and friendly. A nice little wisp of a sherry note. It doesn't have that big sulfur smack in the face. This is good. Here we go. Prost. Mm. Oh, man. That's delicious. And there's no way that's 119.8. I mean, I guess I am getting a little bit of the burn on the tongue now, but that is way too smooth for 120. Oh, salute, TiVo. Happy birthday, man. Happy birthday to you. Oh, man. Yeah, my tongue, I guess... That's the only way you know that this is such a high proof because there was zero Kentucky Hug. Like, I can feel it, and there's a little warmth in the chest, but there was no, like, Kentucky Hug that came back up or anything. It's just the only way you can tell is, like, my tongue is – I can feel it on my tongue. My tongue is still on fire a little bit. But the rest of it, I mean, my God, that goes down smooth. Oh, man, that smells nice, tastes nice. I had a – I had a – feeling I was going to be a huge fan of the Abelora Buna, and it did not disappoint. I know the batches are a big deal to a lot of people. This is batch 62, and it is delicious. I love it. Now, this is the bottle I'll definitely be uh, running out to grab for sure. Probably doing a, a proper review on it someday. A proper review? <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, this is good. Oh, man, what's everybody going to do for the rest of the night? Is it movie night? Just chill? Anybody got any good dinners made up? What's the what's the biggest, like, most impressive dinner that you cooked in the last month? What's everybody's, like, best meal that they've made in the last month? I made some lamb chops the other night that were, what? They were great. <laughs> they were absolutely phenomenal. They tasted so good. I made some stuff for my girl that she said was really good, but it's all like super hot, spicy, like vegan food. And I am definitely not a vegetarian and I don't like hot stuff at all, like at all. So, yeah, I, it's funny. It's weird. Like nobody can believe it because she lets other people taste it. And I guess they're like, oh, it's really good. And he's like, yeah, he doesn't even taste it when he makes it. Nobody can believe it. But, I don't know. You just use the force. I'm at one with the universe. <laughs> But you just look, you're like, yeah, it probably needs more of that. Yeah, it probably needs more of that. And somehow that shit always seems to work out. Because everybody else seems to like it. But I shouldn't tell any of it. But those lamb chops that I made, oh, my God, those are really good. I make some pretty bomb wings, too. I just made those probably last week. They were delicious. Ha! Ah, my man Spot said I made some hamburger helper delish. Hey, there's nothing wrong with hamburger helper. That stuff is delish. Especially if you get the right ones. What, like the four cheese and stuff? They got some really good hamburger helpers. That is like one of the best ghetto meals out there. I love some hamburger helper. I like hot, but I need meat. Yeah, I need meat too. Yeah, I'm a, I am a meatitarian. I got to have steaks, hamburger, lamb, something. I'm not trying to not eat meat. That is, need my red meat. 
There's no way. I just can't even fathom being a vegetarian. Cannot fathom it. But I mean, hey, you know, she thinks it's healthier and she enjoys it. And all the power to her, but I can't do it. I love fruits, hate vegetables. And that's the other reason I couldn't do it. I literally don't eat vegetables. Like, I do not eat vegetables. And they are disgusting to me. There's some, like, I can handle, like, I mean, corn's a starch. It's not really a vegetable. I eat corn, potato, you know, starch, not really a vegetable. I can eat carrots raw, but that's about it. I mean, peas, if I absolutely, like, was forced to, I mean, I could handle that, but that's pretty much where I draw the line. Uh, maybe, like, if somebody did some flavored green beans the right way, maybe that, but that is absolutely it. But, like, Brussels sprouts, mom made me eat that twice, and it was not a good ending both times. I promise you that. <laughs> Instant backlash. And then broccoli and cauliflower and spinach. Oh, my. <laughs> Just some of the most disgusting things on the planet to me. Ugh, I can't handle any of that stuff. Need a good steak with a Cabernet. There you go. My girl, the Giant Tamer, is a big whiny. She loves all the wines. I do the whiskeys and the rum. We are complete opposites in literally every facet. It's mind-boggling. I mean, complete opposites every every way. But yeah, she loves wine. She loves uh, she loves the light spirits. She loves the vodka and the gins. And then I like the dark spirits. I like the rums and the whiskeys. I mean, just every facet of life is just polar opposites. She's the end of my yang. This is wow. That is really good. I will 100% be getting a uh, bottle of this. Because this just brings the extra. I mean, this is just nice. I mean, I'm drinking 120 proof whiskey, and it's just like so sweet and easy and smooth. And I mean, that's kind of my only. I actually like the Abelor 12. I really like it, but it's like drinking water. It's like just drinking sherry flavored water. It just goes down and just. It's one of those you just feel like you could just grab the bottle and tilt it and it wouldn't do anything. It's crazy. I would never do that though. And don't you try that at home. Don't like wine much, but like a red with a steak. Absolutely. They're paired perfectly. I mean, if you're going to get it, just like a good white wine with fish. I mean, I'm not a huge fan of fish huge fan of fish or white wine, but if you get the perfect pairing and like take that bite with the butter lemon sauce and then take a sip of that wine, I mean, dude, the perfect pairing can be mind blowing. It can just be an amazing experience. So yeah, I'm not into wine at all, but like a good red wine with a steak or a good white wine with a fish, like if you get something that's paired perfectly, <laughs> worthy, very good, very, very good. Well, that is definitely 120 proof because I can feel it. It's got the uh, it's got the top brow sweating a little bit for sure. Ah, I love it. Wine always gave me hangovers. Yeah, I've certainly never drank enough wine to get a hangover. I just I don't like the taste enough to do that. There's some sweeter white wines I guess I could get into. Um, the uh, ice wines those are crazy sweet. I actually like those. Shocking. Like, yeah, if you're into rums and stuff like that, you're probably like ice wines because they're super sweet. They're really good. They're, uh, you don't get much. They're not a regular sized bottle because they're so hard to get. I guess it's a little expensive and it's, it's a weird process, I guess. I mean, they have to get like the grapes like in the middle of the night right before it ices or right the day it like ices or something. But it's like a one night thing where you have to call everybody up and go out there and pick all the grapes that night. It's a real time specific. And but man, the end result is delicious if you're into sweeter things. Oh, you close to good fish market there? Not much here in Oklahoma. Oklahoma! I see spots. I didn't know you're from Oklahoma. I lived in, uh, I spent my fourth grade year in Oklahoma City. And my sixth through ninth grade years in Norman, Oklahoma, and I partied on OU campus many a night. <laughs> that place was so fun. But yeah, there is not a lot of good fish places down in uh, Oklahoma, that's for sure. This is Seattle, right on the Puget Sound. There's nothing but fish here. <laughs> there's fish everywhere. Like all your friends fish, the market, there's fish markets, they got everything. There is fish coming out of your ears up here. You know that Pike's Place Market that you always see on TV where they throw the fish? I mean, that's not just for TV. That's an everyday thing that they just do here. 
Like they just throw fish and catch it, and it's a big tourist trap. But yeah, like there's fishes everywhere. <laughs> fish is huge. North Central Oklahoma, nice. Dude, my favorite thing about Oklahoma, well, my favorite thing about Oklahoma was everything because I grew up there and it was so fun partying there. I loved Oklahoma. I was born in Chicago, pretty much grew up in Oklahoma half of my younger years and then finished up up here in Seattle. So nice, well-rounded throughout the states. It's been great. But uh, yeah, my favorite thing about Oklahoma was like in the summertime, you could pull into pretty much any grocery store way back in the day. And they'd always have those huge, big black smokers, dude. And just uh, some of the most amazing barbecue you'd ever want to taste. It's unbelievable. Oh, up there by Stillwater. Yep. Yep. We played them in sports. I remember that. Stillwater. Is that close to Enid? Or is that the other side? I can't remember. Yeah, I was central. Oklahoma City and Norman. So I was right there in the middle. Oh, I drove down to Texas for Monsters of Rock way back in the day. Dated. <laughs> and down in Oklahoma, they have those, uh, they have red dirt in Oklahoma. That's probably the biggest thing you know about Oklahoma. <clears throat> Ooh, excuse me. They have a red soil that does not come out of, like, white shorts or anything. It is so weird. They just have a red clay down there. Like, like everywhere else, the dirt is, like, brown and black. Down in Oklahoma, for some reason, the dirt is red. It's insane. And then they're like, so their lakes are like red. Like you can go swimming in white shorts and come out in pink shorts and like Lake Thunderbird and a couple of those other ones because it's like the bottom of it's red. So basically the whole lake turns red. It's crazy. Doesn't half the state belong to the Indians now? There are definitely lots and lots of reservations down there. Absolutely. Oh, wow. Yeah, Enid's on the other side. Okay. I see it. I see it. Yep, that's the other way. Like I said, yep, Oklahoma City and Norman. I was right there in the middle. So I was like, which way are we going tonight? Oh, man, that's uh, it's crazy down there. I went back and visited some friends. It's like so tight. <laughs> like They don't call it the Bible Belt for nothing. I'll say that. Red dirt around OKC, but in my area, dirt more brown. Oh, wow. So, yeah, I guess that was just where I live. But, yeah, all Norman and... OKC and all that stuff. Yeah, it was all red clay, red dirt. It was nuts. So happy to know the original. Ice and fire. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. What's up? Are you stoked? Are we ever going to see the winds of winter? Do we see that in our lifetime? Does George ever break it down? Yeah, I've definitely lived around. I've been there. <laughs> we have uh, been, been there, done that. Not a lot of East Coast. Um, we did family reunions every other year as a kid, too. So that was like another way that we travel. I've basically been to every state in the United States except for Alaska and Hawaii. But I mean, we, and I don't think I've been up to actual Maine. But other than that, yeah, we've been pretty much to every state in the United States just driving around. And like once we go there for the reunion, then, of course, you know, you kind of travel around to whatever, you know, tourist traps around that site and go over to Philly and see the Liberty Bell. We did all that. So, yeah, that was kind of cool. Definitely have made my rounds around this nation of ours. Which is cool because I think that helps you get well rounded because it is a very different everywhere. <laughs> oh, I think the Supreme Court just gave half the state away um, paperwork filing. Oh, wow. I, didn't, I haven't kept up on that. I haven't heard anything about that. My cousin still calls me all the time. I got a lot of family. Uh, my stepdad's whole family still lives down there in Oklahoma. That's why we were down there. That's a trip. I'm just perpetually stuck in East Tennessee. East Tennessee. I remember uh, stopping in that airport and just instantly the like, that was the first thing you noticed was uh, they have like a Southern accent, but it's just different than other Southern accents. Just the ladies are so sweet. <laughs> that was awesome. Everything's sugar. <laughs> oh, Tennessee was great. They had pretty good food down there. I remember that. I missed the con. They had the last Game of Thrones con in Tennessee. I think they had the last two down there, which would have been awesome. But, man, I mean, that is the other side of the universe for me, basically. And they're always having it right when we're basically shooting down to Vegas for the World Series of Poker. So that was kind of a pain in the butt. But yeah, it was, I was kind of bummed not to be able to make either one of those uh, Game of Thrones cons. That is a bummer. Wow, what a trip. Yeah, I guess that's going on now. We'll have to keep our eyes open for that, see what's happening in OKC. 
been to more different countries than different states. That's kind of cool, though. Was that military going around to all the different countries? I have not been to a lot of different countries. Basically, Mexico and Canada. <laughs> I'm a North American kid. That's me. There's a better chance of you reviewing McCallum 25 than us getting wins. <laughs> oh, that is uh, sad but true. <laughs> sad but true. Come on, George. And that's what blew me away when uh, he put out that last blog that said uh, – since he was like closed up with this virus thing, he's finally like had to sit down and write some chapters. What the hell were you doing before that? Like, what do you mean you just were forced to sit down and start writing chapters? What the hell you been doing, old man? It's like, uh, I mean, he doesn't owe us anything, but my God, my God. It's like he just doesn't want to finish. It's like he knows it's so big that it's gotten so overhyped and bloated that there's no way he can live up to it. So he's like, yeah, I just won't. Which is just sad. We need it. We need it from the man himself. I know he's probably given like lots of notes out to other people for them to finish it if anything happens to him. But we need the we need the mad maestro. We need the man himself putting those uh, words down on paper. I want to hear it from his words, good or bad. I want to hear his words. Nobody else's. Just would stack cash, then go see a new place. Oh, no military, just with stack cash and go see a new place. Oh, wow, that's cool. Shit, that's the way to do it, man. Just get out there and check shit out, dude. That's the best way to go see a bunch of different restaurants and how they do food in different countries. And so that's what I would want to do. Just go on an absolute food tour. My fat ass, dude, I'd be enjoying everything. Like, what are y'all cooking out here? Oh, that'd be awesome. Just go taste all. Like, I don't, I wouldn't get wild. Like, I'm not trying to eat like crazy rodents and weird shit, but I mean, just like the normal cool shit. How do you do it in your country and how's it taste? Let's get into that. Oh, my goodness. This is delicious. That was so good. What shall I drink next? A dream of spring at the same time. Um,. Man, I know people say that, like maybe he's writing both at the same time, and I guess it's a possibility. Like if he wanted, like if he was pretty much done with the Winds of Winter and he wanted to see and wait with the, and see what the outcome of with the show and how that turned out, I could see him like, okay, the show's going in a different direction, so let, let me let that burn its way out, go through. I'll just stay here, keep writing The Dream of Spring, that way I can just drop them boom, boom, and then enough time will be gone. But I don't know. I just It seems more like he's just not done with the one's winner. It's almost like he had writer's block or he made so much money and just had finally had this windfall. I mean, you know, he wasn't a young man when he finally made it and got all this fame. So, shit, if you're 65 years old and you're finally a millionaire, you're probably going to go live life for a while and not give a fuck about anything else. So... That would be my thing. So, yeah, I think he just got rich and he's just living his best life and doing what, you know, he's finally living that millionaire life. So now it's probably, I mean, it would be hard. <laughs> you wait your whole life to finally make it. You finally make it. And what, you're going to sit down and write some more? Hell no. You're going to go out and partay. Go kick it. Let everybody just dote on you and show you how much they love you and, you know, not be that geek anymore. Be the one that everybody worships and wants to talk to and fighting and standing in line to be around. And I get it. I get it. But come on, man. <laughs> Write the damn story. I need to read it. But I get it. Oh, man, I need something else to drink. Uh, what are we going to finish this bad boy with? What are we going to finish this bad boy with? Um, we're doing sherries. We're kind of doing Irish. Why not just top it off with a nice, fat, red breast 21? I mean, if we're going to do it, just do it, right? If you got it, you might as well enjoy it. Let's grab that bottle. <clears throat> oh, red breast 21, the good shit. With no pop. Nothing wrong with this. Probably not. Probably this is my favorite whiskey. This is delicious. Now, is it because it's over three hundred bucks? No, it's because of the taste. But it is crazy how much they charge for whiskey. It's juice in a bottle, man. Come on. But somebody did have to watch it for twenty-one years. So hey, we're gonna do. 
But yeah, this stuff is delicious. This is how Irish whiskey is supposed to taste, I believe. Oh, there you go. Going to open some more Grey Goose. I see it. Get it. Absolutely. That sounds amazing. Woo, boy, I'll tell you what. That uh, Abunda is definitely talking to my forehead. It's got the uh, brow a sweating. That's awesome. Uh, Red Breast 21, though, this, no joke, is absolutely delicious. It's so good. 46% the way it should be. Nice 92 Oh, it smells like it. Sm it has the sweetness of that powers, but then it like you can just tell the extra wooden oak influence. And a lot of people don't like that. Some people say that the Red Rust Twenty One is like too oaky and too wooden influence. But man, I think it's perfect. Yeah, that's just the way it's supposed to smell. <laughs> that is the way it's supposed to be right there. That's all I have to say. I feel like my chair is shrinking. Oh yeah, it was. Man, why is my laptop looking taller and taller? <laughs> Crazy. Oh, what's up, T-Val? Are you going to be mixing that Grey Goose? Or are you just you don't just sip the vodka straight. You got to be mixing it with something, right? Power outings. Had to reboot everything. Uh-oh. You don't have any storms going on there, do you, Spots? I know that is one thing uh, Oklahoma is famous for is their tornadoes. Tornadoes and thunderstorms. Thunderstorms were actually pretty cool to like walk out on your front porch and watch a thunderstorm come in with a lightning crack in and the big gray clouds and just, dude, some of the most gnarly sonic booms you would ever encounter. Like, it was actually pretty cool. So it freaked some people out, but I always thought it was dope. I loved a sick thunderstorm in Oklahoma. But yeah, they were gnarly. They were real. They're like, dude, it's a thunderstorm. No, dude. <laughs> Oklahoma has some thunderstorms. They will rumble your entire house. It's insane. Not a cloud in the sky. Oh, wow. That's crazy. What the hell's going on in OKC? Taking all your power? Rule electric kind of skippy sometimes. Huh. It's a bummer. Tell them to get that in check. Tell them to put out a few extra solar panels if they need it or something. We need your internet. Can you imagine if just, yeah, everything going crazy with anarchy would be nuts, but I think the internet, losing the internet would be one of the worst. It's like, I mean, just that alone, I think, would create the anarchy. Can you imagine trying to live without the internet these days? Oh, my God. There is just no way. Everything we do one way or the other is connected to that. And we're looking at it probably 50 times plus a day. Like trying to live without the internet. No way. What did be, what did we do back in the day? How did they live? How did they make it? <laughs> oh. Your county used to have record tornado. Yeah, dude, there's no jokes. The tornadoes in Oklahoma are were real. They would just wipe out like quarters of cities. They're just nuts. It was devastating what would happen. A little Sprite, a little Blueberry, a little Red Bull. Damn, that sounds like a hell of a mix, t -Ball. I like that. That sounds like a good drink. A little pick-me-up, if you will. That sounds dope. Internet's a lifesaver during the pandemic. It truly, truly is. It's the only way to stay connected. It's like, man, that's what I was doing. I was just sitting here. I was like, I need to, I got so many more videos that I'm queuing up and so behind and trying to get them out. But I'm like, you know what? Sometimes you just need to go live. And like I said, I wanted to go live Friday, didn't do it. I wanted to go live Saturday, didn't do it. I was like, damn it, I'm going live tonight. It's just what it is. I keep telling myself I'm going to be going live more and more, and I just have not been doing it. I guess you got to make it happen. Keep saying ain't nothing to it but to do it. Just get on, hit the play button, and start yapping. Like anybody wants to show up, more power to it. Just get on and do it. Build it up, have a community, see what everybody's up to. Stay connected. Put a little shout out and uh, try to get some of the old schoolers on here next time. Like I said, I've, I've been wanting to go freaking all weekend and just finally just did it. But try to plan a little something and get some uh, some of the old school folks back on here and rip one up for the next one. Cause yeah, I definitely want to make this a thing. We're doing the samples and sipping, getting back connected, seeing what everybody's doing, making sure everybody's uh, staying up with each other. Just rip it, you know, for an hour at a time, see what's up. Speaking of, we are coming right up to it. Oh, man. Let's get it. Cheers, everyone.
That's just amazing. That is the best of both worlds. I've been drinking sherry, been drinking Irish. This is a sherry Irish and probably the best sherry Irish. Absolutely delicious. Redbreast 21 all day. My favorite Irish whiskey. This is amazing. It's so good. Still expensive though. Too expensive. Too expensive. Every whiskey should be no more than hundred dollars, right? I mean, hundred dollars. That's a lot of. That's a lot of money for a bottle of juice. I think. So we're getting more than that. It's like, come on. But then you think somebody had to tend the stuff for twenty-one years in a barrel. That's a long time for storage. Making sure nothing happens to it. So I suppose. I suppose. Oh, man, what are we going to watch tonight? Anybody got any good uh, movie suggestions? Any great movies you guys have seen that I can watch tonight? Like I said, the Dota Mite was amazing. The Good Boys was terrible. What else we got out there that's coming up that's worth taking a peek at? I still haven't seen the last uh, Skywalker that I heard was crap. I can't. Like, are they just hiding that? Was that so bad they're just never going to put it out or what? We got the Kid Documentary, MLB Network. Go Mariners, Griffey Jr. There you go. Yep, that's when I was working there back in 95. So Griffey was still there. That was a fun year. Joey Cora, Alex Rodriguez, uh, Griffey Buner, Edgar Martinez, Randy Johnson. They had a uh, they had a lifestyle or full size video game in there called Killer Instinct, and I just I will never forget that. Like standing next to Randy Johnson, just like. I just kept looking up like so many people would give their left nut for this situation right here. And I'm just in the Mariner locker room with all the players around me just playing video games. Like, that was so awesome. I just remember looking up there and I was like, man, you're kicking my ass. And he just looked down at me. He's like, oh, only because you don't let me. He's kind of slow, but he's awesome. Yeah, those were the days. Those were the days. I actually had to, uh, like, yeah, it was fun. <laughs> Remember when we were playing tape ball inside the uh, Mariner locker room and uh, I was just whiffing, whiffing. And uh, my buddy thought he'd be funny. And one time, instead of throwing the tape ball, he actually pitched a real baseball. And of course, of course, it's the one time I connected. And I mean, just smack, sent the baseball right through the very middle of the Mariner and emblem in the fucking playoffs. Like, oh, Jesus. Dude, you've never seen so many grown men just scatter, just instantly scatter. Like millionaires, like Chris Bazio, the pitcher, he was in there playing with us. Um, the third baseman, a bunch of us were in there. And yeah, the second that happened, you just heard this pop. Everybody's like, pop, I'm out. It was like, fuck. But uh, we went and told the stadium director, like, man, I'm like, hey, this happened. He just looked at us. He was like, you know, he's like, oh, man, thanks for telling me. Of course, went down there and like literally, dude, in that world, it was done in like the next day it was fixed. It was crazy. But yeah, we had a lot of good times working there. I remember one time I worked in it was still uh, when the kingdom was out there and uh, I had to go drop something off in some of the suites and I opened and I walked in there and I heard like this noise, like a game going on. I was like, there's no game scheduled today. And I kind of tripped out, walked into the door and opened it up completely empty i was like what the hell looked up on the diamond vision and they're freaking playing that they had the ken griffey jr uh, baseball game hooked up to the diamond vision because they were getting ready to do some like the grant a wish or whatever so griffey was going to play with some kid you know against that and play on the diamond screen which is like one of the biggest you know screens ever made is just like three stories high or whatever so basically playing a video game on a three-story high tv screen so that's pretty dope but yeah, there's a bunch of cool stories working there. We had fun. We had big fun there. Didn't pay any money, but got a lot, a lot, a lot of perks. Got just hooking up. Like, dude, I was just like, I was young, just hitting the clubs at that time. So yeah, just like trading like nightclub owners, like tickets, free tickets to get into games. And they let me and my buddies drink in their bars for free. Those were the days. Murdered a bird. Yep, that was nuts. <laughs> That's an ESPN classic. That poor pigeon just flew in the wrong place at the wrong time. I was going to watch Helter Skelter Doc on Epix, but little Charlie Manson goes a long way. Yeah, you got that right. Like the alternate Sharon Tate ending and Once Upon a Time. Did you like that, Spots? I went on opening night to watch that shit show of a movie, and <clears throat> spoiler alert, I hated it. Like, did I even come? I might even came home and made a video about that. I don't remember, but. Actually, I don't think I did make one on that one. 
But man, I should have. That was, I hated that show. <laughs> that Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, how that won so many awards and Emmy is like, get the hell. That was a shit show. Other than Brad Pitt, like he was the only, if you're a Brad Pitt fan, Brad Pitt went Brad Pitt and he was awesome. But everything else was stupid. Just slow and boring and nothing happened. I mean, it was a show of nothing happening. Yeah, I was, obviously, I was not a fan of that shit show of a movie. It was so boring and such a waste of two and a half hours. I was like, are you kidding me? And they just gave Quentin Tarantino so many awards for that. I just puked every time they called his name. It's like, stop it. Just stop it. Oh, yeah. Definitely. Griffey had one of the sweetest uh, swings in baseball of all time. He was the kid. He was the man. No doubt about it. No doubt about it. What's up? Am I wrong? Did anybody else like that show that Once Upon a Time in Hollywood? I don't want to shit on anybody else. I mean, they really loved it. Hey, Hollywood loved it. You'd be on the right side of it, I guess, because everybody else seemed to love it. I just hated it. I thought it was the worst movie of the year. I was disgusted how many awards that thing won. That little girl that was in it um, that played against Leonardo DiCaprio, she was amazing, and Brad Pitt was amazing. Everybody else, everything else was just ridiculous. Ridiculous. You got Margot Robbie just driving around, showing dirty feet. I just, oh, God. I just wasn't into it. Yeah, and Quentin Tarantino and his dirty foot fetish. That just kills me, too. It's like, man, I don't need to see your fetish in my movies. Too much, too much. Ah, but what I do need to see is the Red Breast 21, often and always. This has to be... God, is this a top five whiskey for me? I think it might be. I love Irish. I love Red Breast. Red Breast 21, the best. The cast strength is amazing, too. That's the only thing that I hesitate on. Like The 12 cast strength for the price, if you're factoring that in, it's such a great deal. But, yeah, the Red Breast 21 is delicious. So good. It was way too slow moving for me. They did Bruce Lee dirty. Hell, yeah, they did. Kato, my ass. That was messed up. Like, <laughs> Brad Pitt just comes in and going to kick Bruce Lee's ass? No. I'm not buying that for a second. Yeah, I didn't buy that at all. But, yeah, that movie was way too slow moving for me. I didn't get it. Wasn't in for it. Wasn't on for it. Just didn't do it for me. But, yeah, I just want to keep these like a happy hour. Just kind of do these for an hour. And we're a little bit over the hour mark. So I want to thank everybody that made their way out tonight. Like I said, I'm going to try to do more of these more often and uh, keep them coming. And uh, hopefully keep you guys coming back so we can check in and uh, just say hey and hang out for a minute. So I hope you guys have an absolutely fantastic rest of the night. Hope you have an amazing week. And until we see you next time, cheers. <laughs>